It's good to see you. <clears throat> Excuse me. This generation is missing something really cool. In a generation past, and probably long past there, people's homes had a collection of trunks, cedar chests, other wooden containers that were magical, at least for little kids. When you opened them up, which was a very rare thing, there was no telling what you would find. Maybe an old wedding dress or an old pair of shoes, a blanket that your great-grandmother had made, or some other artifact, picture, something that you had never seen as a little kid and it opened up the history of your family or the history of the area. There was this wonderful smell, at least I always thought so. And if worse came to worse, it was the coolest place to hide when you were playing hide-and-seek. My mother had quite a few of these. In fact, a couple of them that looked exactly like this steamer trunk. Today we use plastic bins from Walmart. It's not nearly as much fun. But let me tell you one day when one of the steamer trunks in my home was opened. Don't know why, I can't remember, but I do remember how old I was. I was, I had graduated high school and was waiting to go to college, probably only a week or two from leaving uh, for school. And for some reason, my mother opened up uh, one of the steamer trunks that was normally not opened. And we were going through it looking for something for her. And I found this. This is called an Ike jacket. This is part of the uniform from an infantryman in the Second World War. It was my dad's. I'd never seen it. Of the stories and things my dad had said, which there weren't a lot because it was not a topic that was openly discussed. But I can tell you looking at this jacket, if you're familiar with the uh, symbols, this is the jacket of an infantryman that has been in combat. And I picked this thing up and I was fascinated with it. This, by the way, if you want to know what it looks like when it's whole, it looks something like this. But I was fascinated with this. I'd never seen this of all the stories and things my dad had told me. I had, he had never pulled this out and it had never been discussed. But I found it and pulled it out and was fascinated. But then I did something kind of on the spur of the moment. I put it on. And to my absolute shock, to my absolute horror, to my amazement, when I put the jacket on, it caught me right at the sleeves. And for the first time in my life, I realized, I mean really realized, that the horrors of war that my dad had talked about, the things that he had seen, including he was at the liberation of Dachau, the concentration camp, fighting through the snow in the Vosges Mountains, capturing, being a part of those that captured German prisoners of war. All the horrors and things that were associated with his experience was happening and did happen to a young man my age. Not the 40, 45-year-old man that was so wise and so strong and so knowledgeable. No, it was happening to boys like this. It was happening to boys at the time like me. And I remember it being a pivotal moment as I looked at this jacket in my life. 
And it changed the perspective, it changed the stories, it changed everything for me. I'm grateful that my nephew took that jacket, and I'm not sure where over the years it had been stored, but about 10 years ago he took it and had it preserved and mounted, and it hangs in my sister's house now because I look at this picture and my breath still catches a little bit because for the first time the, when I put that on, I was directly connected to all of the events I had heard about. I want to take you through another moment for us. First John begins with this statement. What was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. John's writing is fascinating. He starts out and, and, and his writing has a boldness and a strength that you'll find that is very different than the other writers in the New Testament. When he begins his gospel, he begins echoing the very words of Moses, the very first words of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But John begins with, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. His, his writing fascinates me. But he begins, 1 John, as he is dealing with the issue of people that have arisen that are denying the very existence of Jesus and especially the existence of the Son of God hanging on a cross. That could never happen. I mean, that's just, how could God die? And they, the Gnostics, were unraveling or trying to unravel the story of Jesus. And John writes in response to that and says, let me tell you what, we what was from the beginning. What we have heard, not rumor, but I heard him speak. And what we have seen with our eyes. And what we have looked at and touched with our hands. This is an interesting expression. This is the idea of taking it and looking very, very carefully and examining it to see if it is genuine. Concerning the word of life. This is the idea of being in close contact so that you see it, touch it, examine it, and become connected to it. This is the truth. And then he goes on, and the life was manifested and we have seen and testified and proclaimed to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us. Paul, Sheen and I were speaking before services about the struggle we have when we talk to people about jargon, about words that we use and don't always adequate, adequately explain to other people or even maybe explain to ourselves. One of those words that I believe fits into that category is this word manifested. We kind of gloss over that word sometimes. Thayer, one of his definitions is make actual and visible, realize. That the, to be manifested is to understand and completely comprehend and have a real understanding such that it is burned into our brain. There's not a part of this that we don't care about, a part of this that we don't cherish, a part of this that we don't understand and dwell upon. 
that God, as He says, and the life was manifested. It was, all of it was given to us. And we have seen and testify and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. We have it all if we will contact it. This is the word that connected me in so many ways. It's my experience in putting on my father's army jacket. For the first time, the frostbite, the horror, the exhaustion, the terror, it became real for me. And i got to tell you, I never quite looked at my dad the same way. His, what we now call PTSD, and shell shock and battle fatigue and the other words that were, it, it had shaped our household. And I never understood why. But the day I put the jacket on, I determined to try to understand, to appreciate, to stand there with him in that awful place. The horrors of that were manifested in that sense to me. Became connected in a whole new way. And then, verse 3, What we have seen and heard we proclaim to you also, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. This is, this is one of my soapboxes. The misuse of the word fellowship. Fellowship is so, so, so much more than people standing out in the parking lot and talking or having a meal together. Fellowship is when people have been bound together in the same effort, with the same goal, with the same leadership, and pulling in the same direction. That's fellowship. I have a terrible example of this, but I had to share it. Horse fall into a muddy pond and can't get himself out. And people around the community came together to, they couldn't get any heavy equipment. The only way they could do it was to good old manpower. I was going to say horsepower, but that was the wrong direction. There's firemen here. There's a vet in this picture. There's the owner of the horse. There's actually a police officer. All pulling, and in one case the guy that's in the mud pushing, but they're all going in one direction with one goal, to save the horse. Fellowship is pulling together because we have become united in a cause. And I want you to go back and look at this phrase again. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you also so that, the attention, so that you too may have fellowship with us. The us here is interesting. As John writes this, probably the last apostle alive, and we take his hand. We hold his hand. But connected to him, there's Peter, there's James who was killed by Herod, there's Matthew, and we're all holding hands, pulling in the same direction because we understand what has been from the beginning, what we have seen, what we have heard, what we have examined concerning the word of life, and we are all now committed because we understand this, this has been manifested to us, and we now pull in all in, in the same direction, except that's not all of that's there, because he says, and indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus. I'm in this circle 
of people holding hands, pulling in the same direction. And I look over, and there's Jesus holding my hand, working, because I'm working in the same direction and for the same cause and for the same reason he did. And that chain of hands goes on into infinity because we are still holding on to the same people, to the same cause, to the same purpose. And then the last statement that's made in this opening paragraph is this. These things we write so that our joy may be made complete. The completion, our joy. I looked to Peter or John. I guess I had John next to me, didn't I? I have John. And he's happy about this. The joy he feels, the completion of this. And then I look to this side and here is I realize that the hand that I'm holding has been pierced by a nail. And yet the one whose hand I'm holding is full of joy. Because of his sacrifice, we have been able to form this relationship, this fellowship together and hold hands and work in the same direction. How is this possible? What gives us this close contact? What makes it real for us? What uh, sh share an effort and the responsibility of what God has given us? What allows us to have our joy made be made complete. And one of the answers to this, a piece of that puzzle, a very important piece of the puzzle is what we are about to do as we partake of the Lord's Supper and we come and celebrate this one who has sacrificed his life for me so that we could join hands together throughout time, across cultures, throughout space. And we're not just left to our imaginations. Because in my imagination, the experience of my father in, in Europe had been very much sterilized and dim until I had something tangible and saw the connection with me as that coat caught me right at the wrist. We have something tangible. We are about to partake of the emblems that represent the body and the blood, the sacrifice of our King that binds all of this together. We have this opportunity. What a privilege to have something tangible connecting us to Him. Think about that. And one of these days, maybe go dig through an old trunk and see what you find. But now, let's put our mind, our focus, and our hearts towards making that sacrifice real for us. Father in heaven, we thank you for another day that you blessed us with, allowing us to come here, and thank you for this time we can come around this table and have fellowship one with another and remember your son's sacrifice. We know before the earth began, this was your plan that he would come and die for our sins so we might have salvation and a home with you. Pray now as we partake of this bread, which represents his body, we remember how his body was hung on the cross and suffered and died for the 
the wages of sin. And pray that we would do so in a matter be well pleased and acceptable in thy sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father in heaven, as we continue to reflect on the cross, now let's give thanks for the cup, the fruit of the vine, which represents our son's blood that was shed upon our behalf. We know this blood was necessary to wash away the sins, and pray that as we do so, we do so in a manner be well-pleasing and acceptable in our sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> 